Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Kevin Carr. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Movement. And in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about conditioning. In a recent post, I said, the one thing I want to see in the fitness world in 2018 is more intelligent heart rate based conditioning programs. In a response to that, I had a whole bunch of people reach out to me asking what assessment do I use to try to determine the appropriate intensity and the appropriate recovery for my clients. So in this episode, I'm going to cover the modified Cooper's test. The modified Cooper's test is a seven minute time trial that can be done running or cycling. The client should be instructed to complete the test as fast as possible, but at a steady intensity, meaning we don't want them to come really hard out the gate and then crash down and be exhausted. If anything, we want them to build up slowly to a high intensity and maintain that intensity through the completion of the time trial. The Cooper's test will help us determine the client's maximum aerobic intensity. We'll measure this using their average heart rate, which will roughly equate to their anaerobic threshold, as well as their average speed, which will be measured in either miles per hour, meters per second, or RPMs. Both of these measures will help us determine appropriate intensities for interval-based conditioning. In this assessment, we're also going to measure one-minute heart rate recovery following the test, which is a great measure of aerobic fitness. So here you can see me riding the bike, and you can see my heart rate reflected on the monitor up on the screen. Notice how it steadily rises and then maintains relatively stable once it reaches a peak heart rate. During this test, the coach should be recording the heart rate data at the top of every minute, so later on you can calculate the anaerobic threshold. Or if your monitoring system provides you a summary afterward, you could just use that. We'll just speed up my test here so you don't have to watch me suffer for all seven minutes. At the end of the test, there are a few more pieces of info we'll want to gather. You can calculate the max aerobic speed by dividing the distance covered by the time elapsed on the test. This bike conveniently provides an average RPM readout, so if you have an Airdyne or a salt bike, you could just use that. After the completion of the test, you will want to see how quickly the athlete recovers in the one minute following. One minute heart rate recovery is a good indicator of aerobic fitness. I would like to see my athletes be able to drop by over 35 beats in the minute following this test. So, quick summary of my data here. I covered a distance of three miles in six minutes and 57 seconds. My max aerobic speed, which was my average speed over the course of the test, measured in RPMs was 67 RPMs. My estimated threshold heart rate based on my average heart rate over the course of the test was 163 beats per minute. And my one minute recovery was 60 beats, which had me recovering from 174 beats per minute down to 114 beats per minute in 60 seconds. So that was the modified Cooper's test completed on the assault bike. Like I said, you can use the same protocol for running. You just might have to do a little bit more math afterwards. Stay tuned for the next episode because I'm going to show you how we can take this data to apply the appropriate intensities and rest periods for our conditioning interval protocols. Until next time, I'm Kevin Carr. This was The Movement, and thank you for watching.